Praise the Lord, everyone. And we just thank the Lord, our God, for giving us another opportunity to come together here on this teaching night. And we hope that the words that we bring tonight through the Holy Spirit will be encouraging and uplifting. And we thank you that we know that we serve a God that knows all of our needs. Let's go to the throne of grace. Father, we thank you. You alone are worthy of our praise and honor and glory. We thank you, Father, for this day. We come before you knowing that you are holy God. So we ask forgiveness for all that we've said or done, Lord God, that has not only been sinful, Lord God, but the things that are unpleasant in your sight. We thank you tonight for the infilling of our Holy Spirit, Lord. The Holy Spirit is in us tonight that will guide us in teaching, guide us in listening and hearing and understanding, Lord, that we might know what you would speak to the church today, Lord. Thank you, Father, for this great opportunity to search your word and know your will. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Tonight, we're going to talk about, I believe this is not only an encouraging message, but a message that in the times and the days that we live in that we need to really understand that this is, this is important. And we're gonna be talking about, the name of the message is the blessed, or the blessed if you wanna say it that way, the blessed hope, the blessed hope. We need hope today. And we need hope in something that man doesn't have his hands in. Because we're limited to what we can do. We're limited to what we can promise. We're limited to what we can fulfill. But when God speaks his word, we serve a God that is faithful. If you turn in your Bibles to Titus chapter 2, we're going to start out with a scripture that will give us, I believe, the proper entry into what we're talking tonight. So we're going to look at Titus chapter 2, verses 11 through 13. And I would thank Evangelist Watts for reading for me tonight. And she's going to start at verse 11. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation appeared to all men. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. The grace of God. We are saved by this grace. Through faith. That not of our own, but it's the gift of God. And this gift of grace has been shown to all mankind. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. We have that. Verse 12. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldliness, worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. That's big because, listen, with everything that's going on in this world today, there's so much going on on every front. The Bible is telling us, God is telling us, this is the mind of God. This is the way that he sees us through his vision that we need to live soberly, that we need to walk uprightly. We need to walk in righteousness and live godly. We need to deny ungodliness. We need to do all of these things while we are yet in this present world. But listen to what verse 13 says. Looking for that blessed hope. Oh, good God Almighty. And we, the, go ahead. And the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Boy, that gets me excited, Pastors. Look, all of this that's going on. Don't look to write it out. Don't, don't look to make everything pleasant. Don't look at what's going on and it looks like there's no hope or no end or, or, or no help coming. We need to keep our minds focused on that blessed hope that one day, I assure you brothers and sisters, one day Jesus Christ is going to part the sky and he's going to come back to take us home. One day. The father's going to turn to his right and he's going to say, son, go and get my children. And listen, listen, this world that we live in, this world that we live in right now, there's a song that, that I remember even my parents singing when I was young. And it said, the song said, this world is not our home. We're just passing through. Amen. We're just passing through. This world, listen, brothers and sisters, is coming to an end. Yes. It's headed toward destruction. There's nothing that can save it. It's been contaminated with sin beyond repair. On every horizon, it's showing up. 
There's disease in the air. The media waves are filled with hatred. Jesus. Filled with discord. In the streets there's violence. The economy is unstable. There's all kinds of deception and lying. All in the world, the moral fabric of society is everything is going downhill. You can't drink the water. I remember the time when I was young, we'd be out playing this time of year in the summertime. You get thirsty, you turn on the water hose and get a drink. You can't drink that water anymore. What about the air? You can't hardly breathe it. It's toxic. They say that climate control is going bad. That, that the whole world climate system is, is, is destroying us. The world is headed for destruction. This is not the way that God started it out. In the book of Genesis, God said that when he looked at his creation and everything that he had made on that sixth day, he said it was good. Not just good, it was very good. Very good. But then sin came into the world. And the destruction of sin will not cease until our Lord and our God return. And then the Bible says something. Turn over, go, go to Matthew 24. Then the Bible says something. It says, listen, I can tell you this right here. This is what's going to happen. Heaven and earth shall pass away. Yes. But my word will never pass away. We need to know what God says about where our hope should be. Yes. Our hope, our focus. Look, we are foreigners to this world. This is not our home. It's not our home. While we're here, we're supposed to do everything that God placed us on earth to do. We're to live holy, love one another. We're to preach the gospel, show people that Jesus is alive and well, that there is a way to salvation and reconciliation back to God. But this is not our home. Amen. Our hope is in Jesus Christ coming back and taking us with him to live with him always. Yes, God. Praise God Almighty. Listen to these scriptures. Matthew 24, starting at verse 32. Look, don't put your hope now in an unrepairable world. Read. Verse 32. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and put it forth leaves, ye know that summer is not. How does that tie in with what we're talking about tonight? Listen here. I, I was looking at this and I was also looking at something that happens in my yard every year. And I have two great myrtle trees, they're beautiful trees. But you know what? April and spring, March, April, May, still no bloom. But around June, July, you start to see little buds form on the tree. And then, the latter part of July and August, they come into full bloom. So every year, when I see those little blooms begin to come, I know exactly what time of the year it is. I, I, I could be somewhere where I didn't know what month it was, but if I could see that tree, because the signs of that tree, they don't lie. They would show me exactly what time of the year it is. And Jesus is saying here, he's using this as a metaphor, but he's using it as a template. When you see the signs, when you see the signs, the undeniable signs of, of the things that are confirming what has been talked about in this book we call the Bible. When you see those signs happening, you know something is very near. Read that 32nd verse again. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, you know not the summer is not. Now listen to what the next verse says. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all things, know that it is near, even at the door. My Lord, my God. It says likewise. Just the same way that we can see when the daffodils come up, it's springtime. Just the way that you can see this tender plant is summertime. He's saying when you see on every front, I just got finished telling you about some of the things. Every front that we have, the economy is bad. The health system is bad. The air is bad. The water is bad. Tension is in the air. There's all kinds of malice and everything going on. Good is being said is evil and evil is being called good. God said don't miss the signs. 
The end is near. Well, minister, people been saying that the end is near year after year after year after year. Well, let me tell you, two things that you really need to understand. One is, when you stop breathing, your end is there. That's right. So, and you don't know what day that's going to be. But the other side of that is, listen, the world today is so unstable. It cannot continue at the pace that it's going for very long. I'm not trying to tell you there's no prophetic message in here in this message right here to tell you when the world's going to end and when Jesus is coming back. I'm just telling you it's time to get your house in order and put your trust and put your hope in what our Lord and Savior have told us. He told us that there will be a day when heaven and earth will pass away. Listen to what the next verse says. Read. Heaven, verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass until all these things be fulfilled. Real. Heaven and earth shall pass away. It said heaven and earth might. Pass. Yes, it, it, it said it shall pass away. But what? But my words shall not pass away. So there's value in the word of God. There's value that supersedes, listen, everything that we see, everything that we hear, everything that we feel, and listen, I am not belittling what's going on in our world today or anybody's personal situation. There are dramatic, horrific, horrible things. There are things that we're confronted with today that, that make you really think. There are things that confront our families and our loved ones, our jobs, our incomes, our health, everything. But God is saying, above all of that, keep your eyes stayed on him. How, God? What did I have to look, to look forward to? What does this world have to offer me? What do I have to hold on to in this world? I mean that the Lord, our God, wanted to show up right there. Come on, God. Look, I'm not in a hurry to die. I'm not in a hurry to go because as long as I'm here, I'm going to preach the gospel. I'm going to tell people about the good news. But this world has nothing to offer me. Lord, has me. nothing to offer Glory. me. Glory to God. All of the riches in this world, all of the money, the buildings, the clothes, the cars, the houses, everything that you can see, all of it is going to be burned up. You can't take any of this where we want to go. We got a home promise to us. Glory to God Almighty. Yes, Glory to God Almighty. I get excited when I talk about this because no matter what is going on, no matter how you feel, no matter what you see, no matter what you're going through, you have that blessed hope. Hallelujah. That one day, one day, one day the Savior is coming back. And he's going to take us somewhere. He's going to take us to a place where we can be with him and live forever and never have to return to sickness and pain and evil and hatred and all of the things that we have to go through in this world. He promised us that. Yes. And the God that promised is faithful. Listen, you have to understand, and I want to use this as a reference, you don't have to go there, but... God said to place our hope, be focused on the expected things that are in Scripture. Yes. The Bible said we walk by faith. We're just talking about that, not by sight. We want to look at the expected things of God, not the suggested things of this world. No, this world will dictate to you that it is falling apart. And listen, it dictates to you. You look at the things and go, where is God? Where is he? The church, the true believer, we know where God is. He lives inside of us. Yes, God. We know where God is. He sits upon the throne and nobody can move him off. We know where God is. God is where truth and honesty and righteousness and holiness and justice is. We know this. But as long as we're in this human body, we have the potential to get discouraged sometimes. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I tell you what, sometimes it looks like you can't take no more. Come on. But you know what? When you get to that point, if you can just think about what he said, 
He said, I go now to prepare a place for you, God Almighty. Jesus. Jesus, if it was not so, I would not have told you so. In my Father's house, there are many mansions. This is not our home, brothers and sisters. This is not. We do got a house somewhere that you can call home. And one day we're going to get there. But while we're here, we're going to live righteous. We're going to live holy. We're going to fight the good fight of faith. But this is not our home. Don't go to war over trying to keep your possessions and the things of this world. Because there's a blessed hope waiting us. Yes. Blessed hope is waiting us. Over in Jeremiah 29, you don't have to go there, verses 10 and 11, God told Jeremiah, he said, look, he said, I'm going to bring the people of Israel. They're going to be led into captivity under the Babylonian Empire. And they're going to be captive for 70 years because of their unfaithfulness to me. Because of their adultery to the Most High God. Lord Jesus. But then he said something. He said, verse 11, he said, well, verse 10, the end of verse 10, he says, look, but, the, but one thing I promise you. Listen, he said, one thing I promise you, I'm going to bring you home I'm again. Home again. I'm going to bring you home yes, again. Yes, that's not your answer. Just, 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 just like in, the, in, the, in, in, in Genesis, in the Garden of Eden, he made that thing so sweet, so good. Everything was perfect. There was no sin. Man didn't have to work. The weather never changed. Everything was perfect. And we messed it up. Yes. But he said, you know what? One day, you're going to go through all kinds of stuff. But one day, I'm going to bring you home again. And in that 11th verse, he says, for I know the plans, I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster. So whatever you see, I don't care how disastrous the world seems. I don't see how messed up, how, I mean, whatever goes on in this world, it does not matter. It's not our home. It's not our home. Hallelujah. They are plans, the Lord said. The plans, the expected plans are plans for good and not for disaster to give you a future and a hope. Hallelujah. That's a blessed hope. Hallelujah. That goes beyond the hope that mankind can have. Now I want you to go over to John 14. I already gave it away a little bit, but we're going to read it anyhow. <laughs> We're going to read it anyhow because this is a very popular uh, uh, scripture and we mostly hear it probably at home goings or at funerals. And you know what? It's all right. It's, it's perfectly appropriate for that time. But let me tell you why Jesus said these words. He gave these words to his disciples to comfort them because the times were unstable. It wasn't popular following Jesus. There was all kind of violence and all kinds of stuff that was going on in the world. And Jesus was, was starting to establish what would be the church that we know today. And he said these words to troubled people that were in the midst, in the midst of trials and tribulations. A government that wanted to kill them. People that hated them. All kinds of malice of disease and all kinds of manner of things were going on. And he told him this, John 14, verses 1 through 3. Let not your heart be troubled. Listen to this. this man, you Come on, man. You're telling me all of this is going on. We got viruses in the air, and, 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 and that people can't even get close to one another, and, and loved ones can't see each other except for on a Zoom meeting, and, and, and we, got, we got wars and rumors of wars, and today there was a helicopter flying in, somebody shot up at the helicopter. We got violence in the streets, people getting gunned down 20 at a time. We got all the kind of sin and evil and all this going on, and Jesus say, don't get upset. Don't let this trouble you. This world is self-destructing. That's what it's supposed to do. I have predicted it that this is going to happen. But read it again. What did Jesus say? Let not your heart be troubled. Come on. Ye believe in God. Come on, God. Believe also in me. Come on, Jesus. In my Father's house Come on. are many men. Uh-huh. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Listen, 
That means right there to me. This is what it means to me. This is what it means to me. He said, look, he said, in my father's house, there are many mansions. You know what that means to me? That he ain't gonna never run out of room. Come on. He got enough room for you. He got enough room for you. Everybody. See, he got enough room for everybody. He said, now, look, I'm telling you now, if this wasn't so, we're talking about Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, who cannot lie. He was sinless. He said, I cannot tell you a lie. I'm telling you if this wasn't true, I wouldn't even say it. <laughs> and then he said this, I'm going to prepare a place where you can finally come home. After you were weary of fighting in this life, fighting disease, fighting poverty, fighting hatred, fighting principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness, rulers of darkness. He said, after you have fought the good fight of faith, he said, one day, one day, I don't care how miserable this life seems, how hard it gets, how heavy the burden seems to be and sometimes you keep your mind focused on one day. One day you're going to hear a trumpet saying, one day he's coming back and he's going to fulfill that promise for a blessed hope. He's going to take us somewhere, saints. Something that you have never, ever, you can, the Bible says, I have not seen, no ear have heard, neither has entered into the mind of man what God had prepared for us on that day. Lord, have mercy. One day. One day. Some people might say, well, this is what you Christians always say to try to pump yourself up to make, y'all, that ain't, no, one day. Hey. I can't tell you what you're supposed to think. Well, I can't tell you what you're supposed to think. I can't tell you what you do think, though. But I tell you this, I found my refuge, I find my peace in Christ Jesus and what he has told me. He said, if I keep my eyes stayed on him, he'll keep me in perfect peace. Yes, I don't know what you would do without the Lord today. I don't know what you would have to look forward to. There is nothing, again, nothing, zero, absolutely nothing worth holding on to in this world. Well, what about my family? If they believe in Christ, you'll see them in eternity. Yes. You want to hold on to your job? Mm. You got to have long on your car and, and, and ADT long at your house. And, 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 and you're afraid to go out at night sometimes. I mean, this is the way people are living. This is the world we live in. But let me tell you, it's not our home. It is not our home. Philippians 20, you don't have to go there. I want you to go to Hebrews chapter 11. Philippians 20, Paul says this. This is, this is really good. Paul says, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Did you read that third verse of John 14? No, sir. Read that third verse. Verse 3. Listen. And if I go and prepare a place for you, uh -huh. I will come again and receive you unto myself. Jesus. That where I am, Come on. there ye may be also. That's home. <laughs> That's home. The, the living Bible say this. Listen, when everything is ready, oh my God. Hey, hey. When, when everything is ready, see, it ain't ready yet, y'all. See, we still giving the sinner man a chance to repent. Yes. He said, when everything is ready, though, when that last soul gets saved, he said, when everything is ready, I will come to get you so that you will always be with me where I am. At home. Hallelujah. At home. At home. Philippians 20, uh, 3 and 20, I'm sorry. Paul said this, but we are citizens of heaven. Lord, have mercy. Where the Lord Jesus Christ lives, and we are eagerly waiting for him to return as our Savior. We're looking to the skies for him to return. While we're here, we're content with the work that we've been given to do. We like our life. We love our life. We should. But this ain't our home. This ain't our home. We can only get a portion of our reward here. The reward that we want is home. Jesus. <laughs> Glory to God. Jesus. Listen to this. We need to learn from those who have gone on before us. Hebrews chapter 11. We're going to start at 13 and just to bring it into perspective. This is what we call, you know, some of his labels, this set of scriptures, the hall of faith. These are those people, Abraham and Sarah and, and, and Moses and, and all of the guys and girls that, that went forth expecting this promise. They were expecting 
Jesus Christ, the Messiah to come. The Bible says in that scripture that Moses, Moses rejected the offer of riches and authority and power in Egypt to go and dwell with the people of Israel and suffer, hoping and looking for the day when the Messiah would come and deliver them. He had a hope that went past anything else this world could offer. He had his perspective right. And what this scripture, these, these scriptures are saying is, we can take a lesson. We can take a note from them. How did they make it? They used faith. And they had faith in God, but they had a hope that they were striving for. Yes. Listen to verse 13 says what? These all died in the faith. Not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off. And were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. My Lord, my God. See, 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 see you, you got to grab this on your own. You really got to let the Holy Spirit show you this. They came to a decision in their own spirit and made a declaration that this is not my home. We're just strangers to this land, pilgrims. We're just walking and moving through. We are going someplace else, so don't get... Don't get discouraged when stuff mess up over here. Don't get discouraged when it don't go the way you think it should go over here. He said, I'm not getting discouraged because I'm walking and living the life that God called me to live. And I tell you what, even if I don't see the coming of the Messiah, even if I don't see Jesus part the sky, I know something that there's a hole in heaven for me. Hallelujah. All these people died. Never receiving. Hey. Never receive it. But you know what? They didn't give up. They didn't get discouraged. They didn't get, they didn't get tired of doing what is right. Why? Because they had their eyes. I think Paul said, I kept my eyes on the prize, the mark of the prize of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus, my Lord. He said, my life could have been like a roller coaster. He said, I've been up sometime and down sometime. He said, but when I keep my eyes focused on the prize of Christ, he said, I find myself to be content. I'm all right wherever I am. If I don't have no money, I'm all right. If I don't have good health right now, I'm all right. Why? Because I know that this thing will never last because my Savior is coming to take me home. When I get home, I'll be all right. Hallelujah. But until then, I'm in a good fight of faith. Hallelujah. Verse, verse uh, 14 says what? For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. They said people that talk like that make clear to you that they're looking for a home. Read on. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. See, so what it's saying is, you know how you go on vacation or you go somewhere, you're out of town and you stay in some place, you know, and you have a good time for the while, but after a while you'll be like, I'm tired of this. I want to go home. I'm tired of this. So this is saying right here that these people came from somewhere. But this country that they're looking for is not where they came from. That's, that, that's not that country that they're looking for. They're looking to the one that God said, I'm going to take you to. Read. But now they desire a better country. A better one. That is a heavenly, wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God. My Lord. For he had prepared them for a city. Who prepared it? God. This is going to be that in, in, the, in the scripture in the Bible that say that we're looking for a city not built by the hands of man. My yeah. That's the one we look, that's our hope. No matter how uneven it gets, unbalanced it looks, unstable it feels, no matter how dark it gets. Oh God, this thing it brought tears to my eyes some night because I don't know about you, but I done been through some stuff. Yeah. I done been through some nights that man can't help me. I just don't understand what's going on. I, 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 I don't understand what I got to be happening to me at this time. And, and I'm looking, but you know what? Something's inside of me. That says, stand fast, brother. Yes. Unmovable. Yes, God. Always abide oh, oh, in the works Ooh, of the Lord. Glory to God. Why? Because this is not permanent. Mm -hmm. This is not your home. Total destruction can come to everything in this life. But there is another calling for us, the saints of God. There's a home waiting for us. 
one day we all want to get there. Yes. If we don't get there tomorrow, next week, next year, don't get discouraged. You have a place here. Pitch a tent. Do the work of the Father. But don't, don't get too settled. Don't get too set. Don't get in, too intrigued with what's going on in this life. Amen. If you have a great job and a great house and a great car and the bank account is full, praise God Almighty. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Enjoy. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes. benefit. Come on. But when that trumpet blows, yes. no, have and our Lord come and part the clouds, yeah. none of that's going to work, be worth anything. The only thing that's going to be worth something is that, are you saved? Your salvation. So, I might continue this message, but what I want to say in closing here is, you can't get excited, you can't even really get involved in what we're talking about tonight if you're not saved. So, if the Holy Spirit, what's that? If, if what you're sensing on the inside is, I need to do something with my life. That's something that you need to do with your life is to trust Jesus Christ as your Savior. If you've ever told one lie, which I don't know a person that's lived on this earth that haven't, you have sinned against the Holy God and will never be able to stand in His presence. So listen to this. If you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior right now, right now, you have as much of that promise of that real estate in heaven as anybody has ever been saved. Ask Jesus right now to come into your heart. Ask him to be your savior. Ask him to save your soul. And he will. All you have to do is mean it. Speak it out of your mouth and mean it in your heart. Well, how do I know that I mean it? Find a church. Find a church. Ask God to show you to a church that will help develop you to learn his ways and to learn how to love him with all of your heart. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. We'll see you next time. In Jesus' name, amen.